video games. When it comes to storytelling, this type of media can do it like no other. Whether it's a full-blown cinematic from the Final Fantasy series or a lore tablet from Hollow Knight. If you clicked on this video, at one point or another, the story of a video game has struck a chord with you and inspired you to try and recreate that same feeling within your own project. While I may not be the next James Cameron, I have my fair share of games that at one point or another have told some sort of story. With that being said, without getting into super complex topics like Freytag's Pyramid, I'm going to divide this video into a few simple categories, talk about them, and take a look at how we can put them into action inside the Unity game engine. Narration is just one of those styles of storytelling that just isn't seen much inside video games. There may be some aspects of the game that are narrated, like let's take Fallout 3 for an example. In the opening cutscene, there is a voice of a man talking about the war and giving a bit of backstory as to the setting of the game. Something like this is pretty typical when it comes to narration, so let's take a look at an example that takes it to the extreme. In the Stanley Parable, you play as a character named Stanley, and this game is a little bit of a mystery puzzle type of game. The most interesting thing in this game is that there are hundreds of narrative dialogue lines that play anytime the player makes a choice. The narrator in this game plays a part in certain puzzles, steers the player, and even talks to Stanley throughout the game. This is an absolutely brilliant way to incorporate narrative style writing into a video game. So how would we go about setting up this style of storytelling in our own games? Huh? I am inside a Unity project that has a first person controller and a simple narrator script. Without getting into the nitty gritty of C Sharp, I have pre-recorded some narration lines and I've signaled them to play only once given a certain requirement is met. Here you can see a player is shooting a raycast everywhere he looks. If I for example look at this shiny blue sphere, the raycast hits it, sends a signal to the narrator, and the narrator plays the correct voice line. Wow, a blue sphere. I wonder who put that there. Although this example is pretty short, it gives a good insight into just how much work went into the Stanley Parable, as not only did they have more mechanics than this example to make it all work, they also had branching choice paths that will alter the entire story, and as a result, the narrator's voice lines. Environmental storytelling is definitely one of my favorites when it comes to adding story to video games. Generally speaking, environmental storytelling is when we place certain game objects in the scene in such a way that the player can interpret some sort of relationship. If it helps, you can think of it as the player is a detective looking for clues. So close your eyes and just imagine this scene with me. Imagine being in a basement of a creepy old manor and coming across a darkly lit room. This room is super messy, it has an old wooden desk, it has cobwebs and spiderwebs everywhere, it's super dusty, it's got beakers and flasks and books on biology just spewed all around the room. You know what, let's just add in the occasional creepy specimen floating in a jar while we're at it. You can open your eyes now and you probably have some sort of an image of what this place looks like. Well, as the player, I would imagine we came across some sort of a hidden laboratory. And since we know those books were on biology and there's those weird floating specimens, it wouldn't be a stretch to say that the scientists that worked there might have created some sort of mutated creature lurking about the manor. As storytellers, we can also enhance this scenario with the sound of footsteps occasionally lurking about the player, or by having the player revisit a room where that one object you inspected isn't quite where it was before. In all of these examples, we let the environment do the storytelling and don't specifically tell the player, hey, the creepy scientist made a mutated creature. The reason this is my favorite genre of storytelling is because it doesn't hold the player's hand and it forces them to think about what might have happened. This is especially true for horror games as the only thing more frightening than a jump scare is when your own brain has turned against you and makes you scared of what you might find if you peek around the next corner. See, that wasn't very scary now, was it? Whether it's characters talking amongst themselves, a stone tablet in the mountains, or a wall of text at the beginning, having some sort of dialogue or text in your game is a surefire way to make sure that the message you want to convey is getting across clearly. At the end of the day, we're all human, and using the main communication tool we have as a society, speech, is the most efficient way to ground your story into reality and make it feel real. With all that being said, there are a few different approaches we can take inside of Unity. The one that I usually go with is some sort of dialogue on the bottom of the screen. While I would love to go over exactly how to do all that, Blackthorn Prod already created a full-fledged video on that topic, which I will leave a link for in the description. 
Rather than having dialogue on the bottom of the screen, maybe you want to have lore tablets that give a little bit of dialogue and expand on the game world. Well, all you would have to do is set up the dialogue in a canvas like you normally would, parent it to one main dialogue tablet one game object, and then whenever you interact with a specific object, just enable the correct UI. In this simple example, I created a script on the player that can detect stone tablets via Raycast and read directly from the stone tablet to know what UI it should be enabling. Although I'm using just basic primitives, with some updated graphics, this is a very simple way to add depth to your game. So with the majority of this section handled via Blackthorn Prod, let's move on to the next. Let's be honest, we've all done it. We've skipped that important cutscene and now we're just stuck wondering what to do next in the game. As a game dev, there are many solutions to that problem. And usually a developer's go-to option is to make the cutscene unskippable. Well, if that's the option you thought of, you are incorrect. That is just not the solution you should be applying. All that making the cutscene unskippable is going to do is just take off your customers and even make a few of them probably just shut off the game entirely. Now, if you find that your players are skipping cutscenes, it means you did a bad job as a developer. You just didn't incorporate the story in a way that makes them want to stay, or you just didn't incorporate the story in a way where there may not have needed to be a cutscene at all. At the end of the day, designing a good story that has seamlessly been integrated into the gameplay is just a massive challenge. There is a reason why big companies hire writers and staff just for that task alone. Bottom line, it is just hard. So as an indie dev who maybe doesn't have the budget for writers and all that fun stuff, we also have to add story to our play on top of everything else. And more often than not, we just fall a little flat. But with that being said, we have a trick up our sleeves and AAA studios just can't do it like we can. We can change things about our game just way more easily. What I mean by that is we can design the story around the game or vice versa. If the plot point is just a little bit boring, we don't have to go through an entire chain of people and get approval from every single person just to remove it. No, instead, if the plot point's boring, we just get rid of it. If your serious story just isn't hitting the mark and your game's mechanics are wacky and funny, you can just tweak either one of those parameters until it all clicks into place. And that is why we have so many amazing indie titles like Journey or Hollow Knight or even Stray that just make us super invested into its world, story, and characters. With all that being said, making games is hard, and I wish you the best of luck. Hopefully you leave this video with just a little bit more knowledge than you had coming in. And if you truly enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out, helps others find the video, and gets me one step closer to reaching this year's goal, which is 10,000 subscribers. Anyways, that's enough of me panhandling. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!